today I'd like to talk about building a portable 60 Hz power supply. Sometimes you'll have the need to run household appliances such as this laptop that I'm making this video on away from a standard 60 Hz outlet. The traditional fix for this problem get yourself an inverter then plug it into your cigarette lighter. This is a bad idea for several reasons let me just mention two. Most new cars nowadays don't even have power at the cigarette lighter unless the engine is running. The other problem is the battery. Assuming you bypass that engine running problem, that means you'll be using the automotive battery. Automotive batteries are designed for high current for a very short period of time. Putting a constant drain on them with an inverter can dramatically shorten the battery's life. Here's the fix. Don't use an automotive battery. What you need is a deep cycle battery. They're designed for a low current draw over a long period of time, which coincidentally is exactly what you're asking it to do. To learn more about batteries, click on the link that I'll put down below once I finish building that video. Now, let's talk about how I fix this problem. Looks pretty simple, doesn't it? First I'll cover the electrical part of this project, then I'll cover the woodworking part. Go out and buy yourself a battery. To increase visual identification of the positive and negative posts, you can buy these felt markers. Red is positive, and green is negative. If your battery posts don't have threads, never fear. The auto parts store sells terminal adapters, as well as the ring terminals you'll need to go on those adapters. Today we're using yellow 10 to 12 gauge quarter inch ring terminals. To hook the wire to the battery, you simply crimp the wire into the terminal, slide the terminal over the stud, and use a wing nut to hold it in place. For your first output, you'll probably want a standard 12 volt DC. Since it's critical that you get the polarity correct, I recommend using a polarized connector such as this one here. It pretty much makes it impossible to hook up the wires backwards. One side is permanently hooked up to your battery and hanging out of the box. Then you can hook the load side up to it anytime you need to. Electrically, this is what it looks like. I want to stress something that's very important. Notice the fuse on the positive wire. You want to install it as close to the battery terminal as possible. Here's why. For a fuse to work properly, current has to flow through it. So a fuse installed next to the battery means the entire wire run is protected from a short circuit. As I've shown here, the fuse is in the current path for the short, so when the current's high enough, the fuse opens and stops current flow. Let's say you install the fuse way out here by your load. Now if you have a short circuit, the electricity will not flow through the fuse, so the fuse won't open, and the wire itself will either melt or catch fire. Generally speaking, this is a bad thing. Anyway, now you have an external 12 volt DC source that you can now use to power your 60 Hz inverter. The next circuit I want to install is a battery tender. This neat little device is going to be used to maintain your battery. And if you can afford it, some will also charge as well as maintain your battery. Unfortunately, I can't afford it, so I'll show you how to charge a battery later. You want to install the battery tender in a separate compartment of your battery box. This will help uh, prevent it from being exposed to any gassing the battery may do during charging. Later I'll show you how to cut this hole so you can see your tender indicators. Wiring up the tender may seem simple at first. It's just two wires. How hard can that be? Here's our complication. Remember those indicator lights I mentioned earlier? Since the tender is hardwired to your battery, when the tender is not plugged in, it can cause a drain on your battery. The fix? Install a switch in the system. Just cut the wire going to the positive terminal and install your switch. When the battery tender is not in use, open the switch and the indicator lights are not in the circuit. I found the best place to put the switch was at the top of the box at the hinge point on the lid. Additionally, a nice feature of mounting the battery tender in this location at the front of the box is that the extension cord forces the lid to be open. Sometimes a charging battery will release hydrogen gas. This is very explosive. The gas is lighter than air, so the gas will vent through the opening. Okay. Here's a problem with what we've covered up to this point. Routing a DC voltage from the trunk to the inverter in the front of the car is very inefficient. It requires large wire and you have some amount of voltage drop. Never fear, on this journey we have a fix for this problem. Simply move your inverter back to the battery box. Mount it directly on top so you can get to it easily. Now your DC current path is two very short wires with no voltage drop. You then run an extension cord from the inverter up to your appliance. AC voltages travel very well over great distances. That's why we use it in houses. Two advantages to the inverter mounted here. One, this is now a self-contained portable 60 Hz power supply. Easily moved to any location desired. And two, 
If you're using this as an emergency power backup, you can plug in the battery tender, let it sit, and it'll take care of itself till you need it. Electrical connections consist of two wires. While installing your wiring, don't forget to include your fuse. The way this circuit works is DC power comes in on one side of the inverter. The inverter works its magic and puts out an AC voltage on the other. You're finished hooking up the inverter. Let's take a step back and look at the overall picture. When you're all finished, you have an inverter, a 12 volt DC output, as well as a trickle charger. I did promise to mention something about charging, so here we go. After a hard day of making videos in my car, I backed the car up into the garage, grabbed the electrical leads from my battery charger, open the lid, then hook up my wires. Remember the red and green felt we put on? That really helps with correct hookup. Now I don't want to leave the charger hooked up all night, that would overcharge the battery. So to fix this, install a timer. This is just your standard bathroom fan timer you can find in any home improvement store. Mount an electrical box on the side of your charger. Route the power cord out of the charger into the electrical box, through the timer, then out of the box so you can plug it in. Timer hookup will look something like this. Cut the hot lead, route it through the timer, and back to the charger. Let's take a look at how it works. And there you go, up to an hour's worth of charge time. Since I only put a drain on the battery for 50 minutes a day while working on my videos, one hour is plenty of time to recharge the battery. Well, that's it for the electrical. Let me show you how I built the wood box. First thing you want to do is purchase all your equipment. This way you know the dimensions and can draw up some plans for your box. Cut the bottom board slightly larger than your battery, but deep enough for both the battery and the battery tender. We're going to install a threaded rod and attach a bracket to it to hold the battery in place. To install this rod, drill a hole in the bottom board on the back side of the box. Then countersink that hole deep enough to hold the nut that's going to hold your threaded rod. When you're finished, you'll have a threaded rod sticking out of the bottom of the board. Cut, then attach the back of the box, as well as the two sides. Install spacers to keep the battery from riding against your threaded rod. Finally, you can use the bracket and a wing nut to hold your battery in place. Cut, then install a wall inside the battery box. Leave enough room at the top to allow wiring to be routed from the battery tender to the battery. When you install the front of the box, this is what it'll look like. Go ahead and mount that battery tender to the wall. Since the battery tender is on the inside of the box, that'll make it very hard to see the indicator lights when it's plugged in. To fix this, we're going to cut a hole in the front of the box. Mark the battery tender location on the board. Drill four holes at each of the corners. This will give you smooth round edges at the corners of the hole you're going to cut out. A jigsaw works very well for this. Now you can see your indicators as well as providing uh, ventilation for your electronics. Well, that's about it for building the box. You can now install your battery and all the wiring. One last note before I go. You may notice that the battery I used in this video is not a deep cycle. It's an automotive battery. So if you're thinking to yourself, I have a spare automotive battery laying around. I'll build my box, then change it out for a deep cycle later. You'll soon find out. Deep cycle batteries are bigger. So guess who's going to wind up rebuilding a box? Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching.